welcome to Cashflow Savannah, episode 18. It's just me here today. I'm here to shoot the intro for this 18th episode. Um, as you might have noticed, we have a local meetup called Cashflow Savannah. How easy is that to remember? It's a wonderful group of real estate investors. I'm very proud of it. We drop a lot of knowledge in this meetup. And we want to share the knowledge with everyone who was there and who maybe couldn't have made it. So if you're local, I want to just extend this invite to you. We do meet every single month. The date changes quite a bit. We're trying to, we're going to at some point keep the venue the same, but the venue also changes. So if you want to know about this event and others, I want to invite you to like our page on Facebook. It's called Cashflow Savannah Meetup. What an easy name to remember. We always announce upcoming meetups uh, on our page, any, any announcements. It's also a great place to connect with other real estate investors, find contractors and vendors. I mean, there's so much free information. Please, uh, anytime, join that group. You can also follow Sid Was Here on social media, Sid Was Here on Facebook, Sid Was Here 912 on Instagram and uh, Twitter. And then my partner, Keegley Savannah. She's also on in on social media under that handle, Keegley Savannah. So if you follow any of those things or join our Facebook group, you will know about this. Um, so this is a recording of our meetup from September 7. This was actually a culmination meetup between us and two other groups. And we're all good friends. We're all real estate investors, but we all have different focuses. So the three of us came together at the Clyde on September 7. What a really fantastic meetup about um finding and funding creative deals. So the subject is fantastic. It's very timely. A lot of knowledge was dropped. So please tune in to our live meetup, Cashflow Savannah, again, pre-recorded, uh, but we're going to keep peppering these meetups in so that you can feel a part of it if you're not able to make it. So thank you again. And I take you into now episode 18. Uh, welcome. Welcome to our meetup here uh, at the Clyde off of MLK. Uh, on this Thursday, right? The 7th of September, almost said August. Is it off and on? There we go. Okay. So um, before we get started on just the topic, I know everybody's here hungry to either get more deals or find their first deal and uh, finance some of these deals. We're going to just introduce ourselves. Um, I see a lot of unfamiliar faces that I've never met. So, um, and then uh, why we, like how we actually put this event on. So my name is, if I haven't met you, I try to go around the room and meet a ton of people, but my name is uh, Corey Griffin. And, <laughs> and uh, I uh, uh, host uh, meetups on, uh, it's called Savannah REI Nights. And we collaborated with Julie and Austin on uh, just bringing the different groups that we've been, uh, communities that we are part of uh, into one room. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool to sit and put that together. So um, I also am a rehabber. Uh, I've been telling people redeveloper, but they're like, what is that, right? And uh, in a wholesale and buy and fix houses here in Savannah. Uh, so uh, that's what I do for my business, but I'm gonna pass it on to Julie and she's gonna explain her group. So. Um, here you go. Thank you. Welcome. It's so good to see you guys. And it's a pleasure to all of us get together and work together because we are absolutely friends and coworkers in this business. Um, my name is Julie Gates and myself, along with my partner, Suzanne Lee, who was not able to be here tonight, um, we run Cashflow Savannah and we have a monthly meetup. We also have a podcast, myself and Chandler Newman somewhere. Uh, we have a podcast about investing in Savannah. So if you're interested in learning about the market, learning about local investors, learning about how they do things, please tune into that. Uh, and we're so glad to have you. So we're going to be working as a team announcing all of our events at all times. We're trying to get some more chairs out for everybody. So anyway, we really thank you all for coming. I am a, I've been an investor here in Savannah since 2004. Uh, I then opened a property management company just for my own rentals in 2017, never intending to manage for anyone. Now I'm a property manager for other people. And then I'm also a real estate agent and I only work with real estate investors. I don't do Barbie's dream house. So that's what I do. I love real estate investing and I really enjoy networking. So I really appreciate everyone coming. And if I can be a service to anyone, just please let me know. And awesome. I'll talk about your group. So thank you everyone for coming. Of course. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, so I'm Austin Saracena, and then I have a partner named Caitlin, who we both run the Real Estate Young Baller Meetup. Yeah. 
So the Young Baller Meetup, we usually kind of have younger groups. Uh, we try and target more of the least experienced, kind of the younger, um, the younger crew between, you know, 20, 30, 40 years old. We kind of let everyone come and join. So we try, yeah, you can still come join. Hey, we love everyone that comes by. And, um, quite a less experienced people, though. We try and get everyone started, kind of communicate with everyone, and I share my experience with them. Uh, I'm still newer to investing as well. I still work a full-time job as a chemical engineer, so that's where I'm different from these two, is I still have a, a W-2 job while also doing real estate on the side. So I like working with people and kind of showing them my experience and how I balance the W-2 life while also trying to get into investing and build a portfolio to you know, reach financial freedom. So thank you everyone for coming. Awesome. So just, just a little background, like I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day, and I was like, yeah, I got a meetup coming up. And, you know, I, a lot of us, we're in the business. Some of us have full-time jobs. Some of us do this full-time, right, as far as investing. So we do, I do this full-time. This is what I do. Uh, I don't have another job, right? But uh, some of us are nuts to come work after work, right? Uh, and put these kind of stuff, these events on. But one of the reasons why I started putting the Savannah REI Nights events on is because of the fact that there was a lack of meetups here. There's like maybe one or two. And I came from California. I'm from Savannah. I grew up in Savannah. But in California, I was doing a lot of business there. And there was meet meetups everywhere. Like, you can't, eat, I mean, you can, one night you'll be in like, you can go to two, three, four meetups, right? And you're not, because they might be in different cities. So for a little while, uh, I was doing a few, and then I noticed Caitlin and Austin doing the Young Baller event, and I was like, hey, do you guys want to maybe do one or two together? Uh, just because the, the community of real estate investors here in Savannah is strong. And, and so same thing with Julie and Suzanne. I, was, I, I just reached out to all the people that were actually like doing events, and we were just like, yeah, why don't we do one big event together? And then ideally, so, cause you know, I'll get hit up and be like, oh, I can't make that event cause I'm going to this event or I'm, so we are just trying to keep you guys in the loop on things. So if you did put your email address and stuff like that, we will keep you guys in the loop on future events, whether it's me, whether it's Austin and Caitlin or Suzanne and, and uh, Julie, we just wanted to make sure that we set that off, that tone off, especially for next year, so. That was a big, big reason. But um, yeah, did you want to shout out some of the, and do your thing? Absolutely. We want to be sure and thank our sponsors. Um, we're proudly sponsored by people that work with other real estate investors. And, and I have worked with some of these guys personally, some of them in the future for sure. Um, our first sponsor I want to shout out has been with us from the beginning since we started our meetup is Bridge Capital. And we do have um, Chris, where's Chris? Chris is here with Bridge Capital and I, of course, I put my phone, oh, Chris, don't hate me. I put my phone in the back, so I'm going to be working it. But he basically said they close very quickly, less than 10 days. And if your uh, closing doesn't happen on time, it's probably your fault, not theirs. I thought that was a great hook. So they're a private money lending firm. We also have a brand new uh, sponsor. It's on the table for you. And this is a general contractor that I've worked with myself, J JV and JR, I'm sorry, NV and JR. Noe is my guy. I don't, they didn't make it. Oh, yeah. Junior's here. I, I didn't even see you. I am so sorry. I apologize. I, Junior got in. I didn't see you. Anyway, I saw you in a bathroom the last time. <laughs> he did a beautiful bathroom for me. Uh, but they, they are licensed general contractors. They are themselves real estate investors. So you tell them this is a flip. This is a live and flip. This is going to be flipped into a furnished rental. Whatever you're doing, they know what they get it, and they understand you're in it for the money. It's not just you know for your uh, to impress your friends. Uh, it's to impress your friends with the cash flow. So, it's very important to always work with other real estate investors with your capital raising, with your uh, contractors everywhere. So, please hang on to this card. They do great work. I am telling you from personal experience. They just finished a project for me on East 69th Street. You can come see it if you want. It rented. I think we had like over 30 applicants, so thank you. It was a, it was a rehab into a long-term rental. Uh, so anyway, I really want to thank NV and JR uh, Construction. And then our third is um, Longhorn Investments. Chip is in the back. He's in orange. He matches. And he sent me a fantastic <laughs> description about what they do. Chip, say it again. You had a great sentence. Yes. So we can fix it for the and in construction. On the fix and flip, we do 100% of your purchase and rehab. That's up to 75% of the ARV. On the new construction, it's 90% of the lot purchase, 90% of the construction. Um, uh, 
uh, one difference, one key difference between them is on the new construction, you don't pay any interest on the funds uh, that you can draw. Very good. Thank you so much. So Chip is here if you want to talk financing. Bridge Capital is here if you want to talk financing. Junior is here if you want to talk rehab budgets. That's always a question. So just we want to thank our sponsors. Thank you so much. So we'll just go right into it. Okay. All right. So um. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yep 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 no yep. I'll do it. I'll do it. No problem. Yep. So. Uh, what we want to do real quick, so the, actually this is great because I was thinking of something. Um, I know we're up here and we're sitting on these high er, chairs, um, but just know like we, uh, I wouldn't consider myself an expert, right? The genius is actually in the room, right? The genius is in the room. The networking is in the room. Who you're sitting next to, you, if you already don't know them, right? Which you should sit next to people you don't know, right? In these rooms. Uh, is you just don't know, you never know who you might be sitting next to. So what we're going to do is, before we get into like you know what we're going to be talking about tonight, I'd like for you all to just take a f like two minutes, maybe put a timer on, like two minutes, just to stand up real quick and just introduce yourself to somebody that you have not met. Make a new friend. Okay. So um, just real quick, and then I'll reel us back in. Go across the room, just make sure you meet somebody that you have not met. All right. So we all know everybody here. We're all family. <laughs> Kicking it, right? All right, so what we're going to do now is now that we know each other and that you met somebody, we're going to do what, they, what we have, uh, some wins, right? And so if you uh, want to uh, say what, a win that you've had either this month or this week or in the last couple months and also a need or a want a need or a want because that's what every that's what we came here for right to meet people and to get the things that we actually need to help us succeed in business right in this business so call, call out Ashley Ashley has a win come on Ashley get us going yeah so we'll, we'll, so we'll start yep yep you can stand up so we'll start with like a win and then if you have a need or a want and uh, I'll, I'll bring you to Mike. Thank you. So I just uh, launched my first uh, investment property as an MTR this week. <laughs> Yay! So I, I blame Julie. She's the one who kicked me in the butt, which was awesome. So uh, yeah, that's my win. And I'm super grateful. And I'm looking for my next project. But um, I'm looking for someone who wants to be a capital partner with me on a flip. So if you're interested, let's talk. Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff. All right. So that's what we're doing. You can just raise your hand. I will bring you the mic. How's it going? My name is Alex. Uh, I'm just finished up my first, first Burr solo. Uh, Trent was actually my lender on it. And then I was able to get the seller to come back and give me financing afterwards on the whole original purchase price and rehab amount on seller financing. Just forget about that. I could use a tub glazer if anyone has a good tub glazer. That's one thing I do need. Okay, cool. Adam? And also, can you say your name too? Like, I don't know if How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is Adam Catledge. Um, I came down from Beaufort, South Carolina. Um, so a win for me is uh, I just retired from the Marine Corps, 20 years. Uh, joined at 17, got out at 37. Uh, joined Sub 2, if you can tell by the hat. So I'm a, one of the Sub 2 community members. Um, joined Sub 2 last June. So June 25th was my first day. June 24th, Adam walked by me right now. I wouldn't recognize him, all right? So I owned one property as of June 24th of last year. As of right now, uh, from June 25th of last year till now, uh, we've closed about $5.8 in creative finance. Uh, bought, uh, we do short-term rentals. We buy businesses. We just closed on, a in June 1st, we closed on creative finance with a dry cleaning company. We're about to buy a dry clean or a laundromat. Um, so we do all over. My company is Coast to Coast Vets. So Coast, like the coast, the number two, Coast Vets. Um, please look us up. 
uh, a need that uh, we would like is, the, you know, to partner with people. Private money, right? Private money partners. You can never go wrong with private money partners. We have a lot of deals. We buy everything subject to seller finance, so low barrier to entry. You don't need 25 to 30 percent to get into a deal to work with us. So please, uh, please us up and if you I don't like mics so if you don't if you want to look us up please do so and I want is I want to um, get to the point to where I don't have to worry about nothing I don't want to be super rich I don't want to be you know an, a billionaire I just want to be able to live the life I want and to enjoy the life I want and to help others That's all I want. awesome wins needs wants Rap, Coast to Coast mixtapes, anybody heard of that? Thank you, thank you. Hello, I'm Santiago. Um, I got a win, so this month pretty much I finished renovating my house and I'm about to lock, uh, or to close a HELOC, which comes to my wants. I'm about to start looking into my second property so I can start my investment real estate, uh, real estate life or adventure. So that's me, thank you. Hey guys, I'm Leah with RLB Property Solutions. A win for us, we just landed our first MTR. We're looking for more traveling professionals to expand our business in that aspect. And a need would be, we're looking for more flips to help build capital. What's MTR? Uh, medium midterm mid rentals. <laughs> yes, there we go. That's it. Cool. You want to do a win? All right. Y'all just want me to just work out today. <laughs> and keep you moving. Uh, so I'm Isaac. I'm from Savannah. So a win for me is uh, me and my wife bought a property. We moved back. And so we bought like a property at the uh, fix up. So we just finished fixing it up. We just got it reappraised. Appraisal came in over the expectation. So now we're looking for some way to do some kind of cash out refi and move on to our next one. So a need for us are lenders who do cash out refis as well as hard money lenders that have like low down payment amounts. So that's up for us. All right. My name is Trent Mathis with OFP Financial. I'm a private money lender here in Savannah. So if you're looking for funds, I'm your guy. That's my needs and wants. I need investors that want to use my money, okay? So come talk to me. I know Isaac. <laughs> My name's Jackson. Um, I'm a local agent here, been in the business for a little over a year. Um, recently bought my first house. My wife and I closed on it about two months ago. So uh, looking to start my own investment portfolio and, and look for my first property as an agent. And uh, I guess my need is I love to partner with investors. If you need an agent to help go to work for you, uh, I love to, to take over it and try to do the best job I can. So there's that. Please don't be shy. Cool. Thank you. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Abhishek, or Shake for short. Uh, I just have a small win, which is winning a fight with an HOA, but it's a big win for me. Uh, and a need that I have is trying to find someone that wants to do a new construction project. So. <laughs> when you say new construction, like you need the builders or you need the money? Yeah, well, so either, like, I can't either I have, I'm either finding the funding or finding someone who wants to do it and buy the, buy the land to do it. Okay, okay, cool. You know, you know what I love is like, you guys will say like a need and a want, and then somebody will be like, so that's what this is about, right? You guys get to know each other. If you guys have a, you want to win and a need and want. Uh, my name's John. I think last time you guys maybe heard that I uh, won by pouring my first uh, self-leveler, which ended up turning or turned out like total garbage. Ended up hiring professionals, which was a really good win for me in terms of the lesson of it. Um, but I guess my real win was uh, this past weekend I rebuilt a deck. Really happy about that. Um, and my want is, uh, I don't know, I'm pretty content at the moment, at this very moment. I do, but I'm not ready for it yet. In October, I want a triplex or a quad in October. That's what I want. Okay. Awesome. Marquise. 
How y'all doing? My name is Marquise Ingram. Um, I'm brand new to, to real estate investing on purpose. Uh, me and my wife, we have a couple of daycares on the south side. Our contractor's in here, Andre. He, he, he was our contractor for commercial property. And we got a, a, a rental property, but I'm looking to do my first uh, flip and hold or flip and flip. You know what I mean? So I'm looking for private money, hard money, any type of money. Just however we can help. I'm tired of using my own money. So that's what I'm looking for. All right. I got. I do have some Monopoly money at the house. If you no, <laughs> we have a little bit more time. If somebody, people, awesome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jessica, and I am new to real estate. So my win would be that. I've been managing my full-time job as an engineer and been cold calling. Um, so I go cold call after work and then cold call on the weekends. And whenever uh, a seller does not want to buy or they tell me to F off, I actually refer them to Chelsea uh, because my ex-boyfriend used to work there. Um, and um, so my need and want is if you're an investor, I mean, if you're a wholesaler, <laughs> Um, I would like to build a relationship with you. Um, we're currently looking for uh, more flips, so yeah, come talk to me. <laughs> Anybody else? I, I can run, so don't be afraid over there. All right, cool, 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 cool. And then we'll wrap it up here in just a little bit. Hey, every <laughs> hey everyone, uh, my name is Irving Brooks. Um, my win is I just finished uh, um, construction on my first flip. Um, it's currently on the market in Jonesboro. And um, my need and want is you know, more private money lenders and real estate agents uh, that do work in the Savannah area. So that's where I'll be doing my next flip. So. Awesome. Any more? You, oh, thank you. There's like these low-key people that I know in here that are just like solutions. Um, my win is um, we uh, helped a lady out uh, that needed to move, and we were able to give her price she needed for a house, and she got to, got the money, and she's gonna have money to go on to have a new life with her daughter in Boston. Also, had a couple of the wins with uh, um, being able to offer a little bit of mentorship with a few people around the community. I'm really enjoying doing that, and um, I want to do more of that. So anybody that, that's trying to start out that wants a little guidance, I'm willing to help out on a limited basis and uh, try and guide them. And we've got a lot of community members here that's got a lot of knowledge, and I invite everybody that's got the knowledge to share and mentor people. Thank you. I can say really great things about Kevin, and um, I will. He's an amazing person, him and Beatrice. They run a very successful business, and they've bought a lot of deals from us, and they're very serious buyers. If he says he's going to do it, he'll do it. If he doesn't, he won't, and he'll let you know. But if you do need help, like Kevin is somebody that will help you, especially if you're like trying to wholesale or anything of that nature. He's a great, great human being. Um, I'd like to go. Can I go? Is that cool? So I had a win. Um, how many of you got checked in by Dolly up front? That's my sister. Say hi, Dolly. Hi. Um, we actually just went through like two, almost like three weeks of just onboarding. So she's coming in and transitioning into the business to help with our operations and make it better. So that's a big win for us as a company. So uh, I'd like to give us a, a round of applause on that. And a and, uh, need, just, uh, I, I just need for you guys to just keep supporting these events, right? Come out to these events because that's why we do them, whether it's, you know, wherever, whoever's doing them, right? So just come out. So I think that's a big need. I have a win, and it's that next Friday, I'm going to make Michael Bucciatini really mad because I'm closing on my first storage facility. I'm really excited. So, if, thank you. Yeah, I'll tell Michael about it all day, but that's my win. I'm sorry? Um, I'm going to need someone to help me run it if someone's in 
if someone lives in Pembroke and wants some work, I do need some help in Pembroke on my storage facility. But I'm, I'm excited to learn about it. I hope we cover the self-storage space as one of these meetups at some point in the future because it is a great space. I'm in the learning phase right now. So I'm, I'm excited to learn about it. I'm excited to teach about it later. But anyway, that's my win. Next Friday, September 15, 11 a.m. I'm signing. Awesome. Congrats. All right. All right, so my win would be that I'm 26 years old and own five properties, so I'm very yeah. proud of that and <laughs> and looking to continue to grow. And the need that would be is I like making relationships with people, so I need you guys to come talk to me and just tell me your story, and I'll do my best to share mine and just continue to talk to everyone and build relationships. Awesome. Cool. So um, let's talk about deals. Are you guys open to that? Okay. So um, I don't know how to find any deal. No, I'm joking. I'm totally kidding. So, um, but this is open. Like, uh, just shout it out. How many of you are, uh, well, not shout it out, but raise your hand. How many of you are, are like actively spending money on marketing right now, whether that's lists, sending out direct mail, like, like actively? One, two, three. Okay. How's everybody else finding your deals? Shout it out. Like, how are you guys? Word of mouth. All market. Prop stream. Prop wire. Cold call. Cold call. Cold call. Cold call. Okay. Okay. So it's not like we don't know how to find deals, right? It's just really like what's working and what's not working. Um, and then investing into the marketing. You know, it's very interesting, this business, right? Because it's a, it's a business that you can get in with, I don't want to say little to no money, right? But you can, right? So it's very interesting as a business how people operate. They do not want to, like a normal business. Like, I don't know the Clyde or anything like that, but normal business, you go to the bank and you get what? A loan for your business. Here, it's like investors are scared to put money into marketing. It's just, I don't know, it's just interesting to me, you know, how we want to just not invest in marketing and then we find deals, right? So, and it's a confidence thing. So, um, I'll talk just a little bit about how I'm finding deals right now, but some of the shifts that I'm seeing, um, I do a lot of direct to mark direct to seller marketing. I don't do a ton of on market deals, but I do see a shift changing where there's a lot more deals on market as well. If you're making the offers, I know Kevin grabs a ton of them all, all, on the MLS. I was gonna say off the MLS. I was gonna confuse you, right? So, um, but for us, what I've seen a big change in is I was heavily doing. Ooh, should I say this in front of everybody? I was heavily doing like text messaging blast and voice messaging blasts and cold calling and that was very that's what we call um, a lot of outbound a lot of outbound marketing right and it works I've gotten lots of deals from it done tons of stuff with it right but it things are changing how many of you love getting spam calls <laughs> right and if you own a home and it's in your own name you're pro and it's past 10 years you're probably getting called all the time I mean, Savannah's pretty cool, but like when we do stuff in Jacksonville, like do marketing in Jacksonville or do marketing in Atlanta, the amount of cuss outs is like, whew, it's way through the roof, right? Savannah, they're nice. They're like, listen, I told you don't call me again. Take me. They're really nice, right? So what I'm seeing a shift in, not saying that it's not working, still do SMS, still do R RVM, but what's happening is you have to register your, your businesses, right, to these platforms, which is great. It brings transparency. There is a lot of scamming going on outside of like real estate, like people call and do all that. So I get it, the, the phones are the cellular people, they have rules, regulations. So a lot of that's changing. Right, so if you're not registered and you're trying to call and you don't have a business name or you're not putting it in your own name, then these companies are gonna cut your account and you're not able to call or text and all that kind of stuff. So I've been seeing a lot of changes with that. So what have we been doing? Registering our companies <laughs> and getting things together so that we can make sure that we're not getting cut off of that. Now I am slowing down my ringless voicemails and my SMS and I'm do personally, I'm doing more direct mail I'm doing more, uh, we're still continuing a cold call, right? But online marketing, like PP, uh, pay-per-click, or you know, pay-per-lead, uh, PPL uh, type of marketing. So pay-per-click, right, is like Google Ads, things like that, and then PPL. None of this stuff is cheap. That's why I started out. If you're just starting out or if you're looking for deals, you need to ask yourself, what is my marketing budget, right? What are you willing to spend? 
if it's not money, then how much time are you willing to spend, right? Because you have to budget something if you're looking for deals, right? And I don't care what anybody says. It all starts with the deal. It all, like, it, it, you can't have anything happen outside of having a deal locked up and closed, right? Or if you're wholesaling it, wholesale it. It all starts with that. How do you get the deal? You got to start marketing, whether it's word of mouth. Like, I didn't say one of my needs. If you're a wholesaler, you have deals. I'll look at it for sure, right? But, like, you know, you just want to continue to do that. So direct mail is big. TV ads. Anybody doing TV ads in here? Right? Anybody afraid to do TV ads? <laughs> Right, TV ads, radio, a, a lot more outbound marketing I'm seeing is happening versus uh, you know texting and, and, and SMS. It was a little bit of wild, wild west out there, and it kind of is still, but even with like wholesaling, like if you're wholesale, how many of you have wholesaled a deal or bought from a wholesaler before, right? So what are the shifts that we're seeing with wholesaling? is there's regulations happening, right? People are getting pissed because not everybody's educated. See, with, with investing, you don't need a license. You can just say, wake up tomorrow and say, you know what, I'm an investor. And that's great, right? But it also is a double-edged sword because people aren't getting educated. So I do commend all of you for being here tonight to like learn and have the, have the hunger to learn, right? Because if we don't, like, because what's gonna happen is, is either you're gonna have to close on that deal, right? and then you can sell it the day after, an hour after. It's still a wholesale, but you're closing on it because there are gonna be uh, regulations and things like that that might come in place. So why wouldn't you get your license, right? And what does that do? Agents like working with agents, so that's gonna open up more uh, deals that might not even hit the MLS. So these are just thoughts. I'm just trying to give you guys some thoughts on where things are going, but that's how I'm finding my deals. It's not really rocket science, right? I think a lot of people, I mean, the last couple deals, we got something from a realtor, and then we got a, a deal from a wholesaler that called us because we were doing a flip around the corner, a, a rehab, a redevelopment, and then uh, one was direct to seller. This was like last week. It was just direct to seller, us doing phone calls. Now, I want to say this last thing. I'm going to pass this to it on to how you're finding deals or your investors are finding deals and then how you're finding deals because I know you just closed on one like last, yeah, last week or something. So um, one of the things that, that uh, we got a property that it was in, and this has happened before, we bought the list in 2019 and we just closed on this deal. It was in our system since 2019. How many years ago was that? So like if you're not following up with leads four or five years ago, right, then some of this stuff, like they wanted 75 at the time and we're, we're I, hopefully moving forward with 145, right? And the numbers make sense. So it's like things change over the years and you gotta keep following up and that's where having good systems and processes and things of that nature outside of just sending a, a mailing list come into play. And then on top of that, how are you converting the leads? That's why so many people don't market, because there's also a lack of confidence, like if the deal comes, then how do I close this, right? And so that's knowing like sales, which is a great skill to know, right? Knowing how to buy over the phone or in person. So that's enough for me. I just wanted to just share some of my thoughts on where I'm seeing marketing going, where I'm putting my efforts in. You might see me on TV doing ads and doing more radio, whether it's me or somebody else, but the company definitely will for sure over time do more outbound. I mean, just like any attorneys in here? Good, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, I'm totally kidding. No, but what do they do? Like they have billboards, they have TV ads, they have radio. This stuff works. They're not just spending that money because they look good. The stuff works. Just, you know, let's not all be on TV tomorrow, okay? How are you finding deals? From two different angles. I'm an investor myself first and I'm also a real estate agent. So as an investor, the, the deals that I have purchased, the two most recent deals I've purchased were both through relationships, period. And these are people I had known for a while and talked to for a long time and magically discovered they had real estate that, that was driving them crazy. And I had, I was not friends with them for that reason. But I, every one of you has relationships with people who own real estate and it's driving them crazy. So find a tired landlord that just is over it. I'm one myself, actually. Get me in the right day and I probably would sell you something. But um, Relationships, I promise you, are my number one source for my personal portfolio, although I find them everywhere. For my clients, I am an agent, and honestly, we're making the deals off of the MLS. If you are telling me there aren't any deals out there, I'm gonna call BS on you, and so is Kevin. 
uh, and you need to be working with an agent. We have several, which is great, that understand investing. And if your agent is scared of a lowball offer, you need a new agent. It is our job to get you the lowest price, not the highest price, because we get the highest commission. We want to get you the lowest price so that you actually make money. So make sure you're working with someone that understands that. And so when properties sit, that is a great time to get a lowball offer. Also, if you have cash or private money from, say, one of our sponsors, and you can go in with cash, you're also going to get a better deal. So it's much easier to go on market and say, hey, Mr. Smith, you've been sitting for two months. I'll give you $30,000 less than ask, all cash, quick close. They're probably going to take you very seriously. So get someone to help you that can do that. So those are just two things I want to put above your last thing I want to say, and I'm here to help my fellow, my fellow agents. Don't go inside a property until you've driven it yourself. Do not wear out your agent because when you're looking and offering and looking and offering and looking and offering and then the agent doesn't make a dime for six months, they don't want to work for you. Okay. So drive everything. Don't go inside it and use up their time unless you're pretty sure you're going to write an offer. Okay. Just be cognizant of your agent's time. They'll write 20 offers for you, but at least don't make them write. Don't walk in the door and waste your time and go, I hate it. I already hate the neighborhood. I don't even need to go inside. You're wasting their time and that's unprofessional. Okay. Thank you. And um, I promise you, just drive everything. If you like the neighborhood and you're going inside just to verify the numbers that you've already pulled, you're not wasting that agent's time. You're working as a team. So just be aware of that. They've got to pay their bills. So anyway, shout out to agents. I love all of y'all. And I hope that helps. <laughs> Go inside. <laughs> when there is one photo. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, I had if, no, no, no. That's a great question, Shake. When there's one photo, that is an investor special, as you probably already know, and you need to run towards that deal because everyone else is running away. So that they're telling you this is for an investor. You need to be running numbers. You need to drive the neighborhood, and then you need to set up a showing if both of those, if those other two things are a yes, then you set up a showing. But that is, you know it's a piece of crap. Who cares? We're going to put in paint and floors. I don't care what I buy, put in paint, paint and floors. Probably a kitchen too. I don't know, but that's a great question. But run towards that. So it does depend though too. Like if it's on Zillow, you know, look on realtor.com or Redfin and make sure there's other pictures because you don't want to, I mean, unless your criteria is buying turnkey and stuff like that, um, Zillow takes their pictures off. You guys notice that? They just like, yeah, after a while, all the, because they're scammers. Right. In the last five years, you might get an idea of, hey, I might be able to know what my rehab is before I can walk through it. Absolutely. So Austin, how are you finding deals and maybe your last one? Or? Yeah, so most of my deals have all actually come from the MLS, so having a good agent. Uh, agents are extremely powerful. They will find the deals, they'll bring you the deals, and they'll teach you, you know, what to do, how to write a contract, how, like, what you should negotiate, all this stuff. So if you're new to investing, having a powerful agent to kind of guide you through finding deals is the best way to do it. Another way is by coming to events like these. We were all investors. A lot of us have properties. A lot of us are looking for properties. Uh, like they said, well, the, if you get them on the right day, there might be a property they want to get rid of. So if you just talk with everyone here, talk to all the meetups, keep coming to the meetups, eventually you'll meet someone that might you know, want to give you a deal or at least connect you to someone that has a deal that they're trying to get rid of. So build relationships, communicate with people, come to networking events, and then also have a very good real estate agent, and you'll definitely be able to find a deal that way. Can I have one other thing? Yeah. Um, years ago, I wasn't an agent, but I, I still work with these same guys. I told them years ago, if you have, I told agents, I said, if you have a property that you don't want to deal with, I'll take it off your hands, no questions asked. And I got a lot of deals. Again, that's a relationship, may I say. But I had so many agents call me and go, there's a house with six kids in it. The tenants are inside. The landlord doesn't want to deal with it. I said, all cash, quick close, no questions asked. And I got killer deals because the agent didn't want to market it. They didn't want to show it. They didn't want to put it on the MLS. I was their easy button. So be their easy button. Put the word out. Tell them. I'll take total pieces of crap. That's what I'm looking for. They'll be like, Bob, take this house. So, uh, What's some struggles that you guys have? Shout it out, like, to find a deal right now in this market. Go ahead. Um, like 50 homes. Yep. How do you get funding for it? Oh. Anybody in here would fund a portfolio? I hate that question. Before. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, the question is, is portfolios. How do you find the funding? If you got a lead that just came in and it's a 100 unit, 200 unit, or five units, 
How do you get the funding? But like single family that, you know, different single family homes, they want to sell all together. Right. So we're talking about the funding or finding those deals? Funding, funding for it. So that could segue into creative financing, right? Because once you have the lead, a lot of times, I know we got, I see the hat, right? But a lot of times like sub two can be looked at as a, as a uh, strategy to acquire property, but you could sub two or owner finance these things. That's one way, just kind of throwing that. One, like for example, one market mm -hmm. and buy an agent, and let's say you did offer or you presented creative finance. Right. The agent said no. Right. Would you go the other route? Or would you just What's the other route? Reach out to the seller. No. Not never. What I what I would yeah. But if you have hard money like our sponsor, you can close in cash. Yeah, I was gonna say so creative is one. We have two guys you need to You gotta shop yeah, you'd have to shop it for sure. You know, and you'd have to shop at the lenders, and if it makes sense, a lender, you, you know, you shouldn't have a problem with it. <laughs> Welcome. Any other deal questions? Because we can jump into sub. because of the lack of knowledge and wanting the interest to understand creative finance. It's almost like the roadblock. Hey, I'm trying to solve a problem for your sellers. I'm the one to be paying the commission anyway. Let's try to figure out a solution and it's automatically, no, we don't want to deal with it. So really coming over those struggles and really drop, trying to drop that barrier and educate and then reassess and go back and no, that's great, man. They're, they're like, I guess the elephant in the room is like agents and investors in a perfect world should work together, but they don't, you know? And so, um, and then what happens is, is, you know, this is probably, uh, there's a lot of gurus out there, and I'm not talking about Pace and, and Jamil, but there's a lot of people out there that teach stuff, and then somebody might hear it and not do the right thing. So a lot of times you're tainted. So you have to find the right agent, right? And and then that agent, and sometimes you know talking to these sellers. So I think there's like a disconnect there, you know, with with especially with the sub two community, right? I definitely see that even wholesaling, right? And it's probably because there's so many people teaching this stuff and they're getting hit left and right. So um, in my mind, I think it's I, you know I I do everything off market. Even when I offer sub two or if I offer owner finance, it's usually after a cash offer. And I'll say, hey, we have another program that might work for your price, right? And so, but we're all off, off market. So I think an agent should talk about that on how they feel about, oh, you know? Please. Why don't you have your own agent that explains it? Because it costs you nothing to have a buyer's agent. So why don't you have an agent that can explain it? I had a deal just last week and it was the U.S. government was my client and the seller's agent didn't understand a, B, C, Q, R, T, or whatever. I explained. I was yeah, the I've interpreter. Done I've done those. Yeah. But, I, you know, a lot of times, you know, for me, I, I, sometimes I like to mark, I like to grab those low, low equity, so there's very little need on bonds, right? So it's really easier sometimes for me, you know, like last month, you just pay the listing agent side. You have to pay the buyer side. Mm -hmm. now, you okay. know, of course, it's the contract with the seller, it's not my contract, right? <laughs> How many agents are in here? Like licensed agents. It's okay, I'm not gonna bark at you. <laughs> awesome. So like um if anybody wants to throw it out there, like why would it be tough for somebody who's coming in with creative financing to offer their client? Because you got to remember too, like an agent's job is what? No, it's to look out for this, to whoever they're representing's best interest. Is it's it? So sometimes you got to look at it like, are we communicating well enough to that agent? Do we have enough relationship with that agent? Over time, maybe the first one, it's a no, and then you explain it, and maybe it's not. But any agents want, I'll run to you. Any agents want to explain or had this happen? Has anybody had this happen where you got an opportunity, and you don't have to if, if it's, you know, too much. 
But if you had an opportunity and you got uh, somebody who was pitching maybe sub two and you were like, no, because of this reason, no or yes? Just do it for the YouTube. Do it for the YouTube. Uh, as an agent for me, I guess it would be um, making sure, I know it's subject to, so essentially you're going to, you're going to make the payments for the, my client. But I think most of the time agents get hung up because they think their client wants that money now. So with that said, if I don't put that in my, uh, I don't usually do subject to, so I don't put that in my um, agreement with my client because most of my clients don't want to do it. I've presented it and they don't want to do it. They want cash and most people do. The other thing I'd be worried about is, do I know you well enough that you're gonna follow two on that subject too? That's the biggest hurdle for me as a real estate agent, and I'm an investor and married to an investor, and still, if I don't know you, I'm gonna be worried of that subject too because I wanna make sure my client's credit isn't gonna be ruined because you miss a payment. And that would be the reason why I, would, I wouldn't say no, I'd present it because as agents, we should all be presenting every option to our client, even if it's not in your contract, because you're doing them a, a, an injustice by not presenting every offer. Because um, maybe they say yes, and if it takes you help to, from another agent, I'd get another agent. Or in my case, I'd just ask my husband, and I'd have him walk me through it, and that'd be it. But it, for me, it would be making sure I knew the person before and vetting them very well before I accepted that offer. Yep. Take them to a fancy lunch. Oh, thank you. Um, I just want to say, so what would make sense for a sub to, for like a seller? Why would a seller even want to, like, is it, let's look at it from like, okay, yeah, agent point of view, but let's say as a, as a, buy, as a buyer, right? What's my pitch to a seller? And I'll just give you an example. Um, usually, usually it's because they don't want to pay capital gains and they're so used to the payments from the rentals that they've had, and we've built enough trust where we can talk about subject to, and that's really a big, big thing as well. Like, if you sold a house, you bought it for 40, and it's worth 220 right now, right, and you have no, more, you have no mortgage on it, what happens when you sell the house? You get hit with capital gains, right? So that's a strategy if, if the cash offer doesn't work, or if you're an agent and you're thinking about the seller in that type of way, maybe you're not, right, as an agent. And you're just like, hey, like this is an opportunity, and then you have this other opportunity. What does the seller want? Seller might say, I want the money because I'm going to Mexico. Go gamble or whatever, right? I'm not doing that. But do you gamble in Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> No, but but no, just on like a real a real. T I didn't know if there was casinos there or not, but I just um, I think like at the end of the day, it's all about the seller. Whether you're an investor, I mean, yes, we want to make our money, but even for me, like when I'm thinking of making my offers, like is this gonna benefit? Is this gonna be a win-win-win? The seller wins, we win, and the whoever else is on the other end wins, right? So, um, yeah. Anybody else want? Okay. No, go ahead. The rap, W R A P? Yes, yes, okay. The rap, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Someone in here know about that? No, seriously? It's a strategy that you can use for subject to, but they have to agree, right? Yeah, yeah, so you have to the, the agent. We solve the problem. That's what Does anybody else? So what do you guys think should be the first thing you do? If you got a, does who has a subject to contract or like an owner finance contract? Okay. So like if you don't have one, that should be like the first thing you should do is get one and then what? Get it looked at by a, thank you. Yeah. Then you can know the laws here. That's a big thing. So then, because I've had a subject to where I was going to do a subject to and, the, and an attorney was uh, telling me I should do a wraparound, but it didn't make sense because of, I can't remember exactly the reason, but it was gonna benefit the seller more than it was, it was not a win-win. Like I almost was gonna lose if I took that that way. So you just gotta, you know, he was, he was right that way, right? But it just didn't make sense on my end for the sub two, so. And when you say you're gonna close with a 
attorney, Mr. Smith. I'm going to close at Mr. Smith's office. He's now your attorney. You can ask him a question. It doesn't cost you money. Just send the contract over. We're going to close with you. Hey, I have a question. Free. Any questions about deal finding, subject to sales, negotiations? Uh, I have a question regarding uh, financing. Yeah, I'm sleeping like one of the with me right now, right? So I'm trying to find a deal within like max 200k where I found the property for 100, 150k and I have about 50k of fixed. Right, so fix that. I am in this situation where I try to finance the deal. I already have a pillow, pretty much close, right, where I can get the down payment, right? But I don't want to do a flip. I want to buy, I want to get a buy and just to start with my portfolio, right? But because of my situation right now, like the bank is not necessarily going to uh, give me a long term, uh, I guess, loan because of my debt to income ratio or because I guess I don't have the cash other than my pillow. I do have, I do have some cash, but I don't want to use it. Use it. Well, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> my question is in my situation, what is the best deal? How, how do I approach a private money lender or a family lender to finance my deal as a buy and hold rather than a flip? Okay, I don't want the equipment, I don't care if I. I just care of like holding something out for it, right? In my place right now. So, um, does the deal make sense? I'm gonna let Julie answer this, but like, does the deal make sense, like, numbers wise? Like, on paper, like, are you gonna profit? And like, is there equity if somebody's gonna foreclose on you? Like, you gotta think about those things, right? Is there enough? It sounds like there might be. So, the question was he has a deal, it's for example, $150,000 purchase price, and then it's going to need about $50,000 worth of work, so $200,000. And then what is your expected ARV? So, yeah, so actually, um, I was just looking at this property yesterday. Uh, purchase price is $150,000. Right, purchase at uh, $150,000. Uh huh, that's okay. Okay. That's okay. We're learning. You don't have to be exact. It's okay. Yeah. So he's going to purchase for 150, and he's going to assume they're assuming uh, 50,000 in repairs. But the ARV, which is after repair value, is expected 300,000. Yeah. And I like your numbers. It's great, and it's always important to know your numbers. And you have some cash, which is great. But this is where hard money is your friend. Do your numbers. Meet people that you know, like, and trust. Check the points. All of it. And then my suggestion for you, I understand you said something about worrying about the income, debt to income ratio, which is fine. They have a product that's very popular right now called a DSCR loan. Have you heard of this? Debt service coverage ratio. You guys should be taking notes if you brought your pads of paper. We have excellent DSCR lenders. All of the agents in here probably have six that they work with. I have an excellent one. Um, but DSCR is debt service coverage ratio. They base it on the value of the property and the uh, amount that it's gonna bring in for rent, if that's if I'm saying that appropriately. So I would use hard money and your cash, close it, and then cash out refi into a DSCR loan. It'll do a 30 year fix for you as soon as it's done, and you'll get all your cash back. Oh. What is the percentage that you can go up on your DSCR loan? Isn't there a percentage that they go up? I'm closing on one next week, and I can only speak on this one. Mike Bucciatini is better. I think 75% ARV. I lender. Some lenders, they limit the, the, your, your experience and the numbers, but the average is the, the, the lowest I've seen is 70% ARV, and the highest I've seen is 80. 80, okay. Now with the current market condition, most of the ones that we're offering me are down to 75 right now. So 75% after repair value. So 300,000, 75% of that would be what, 220, 250? So you'd still have some equity left. 70, between 70. So 1.1, uh, it, it, with any of those numbers, you still have some So when they look at the numbers for a lot of the DSCRs, they want to see 1.1 to 1.2 on that rent income. So say his loan is 200K. They're going to want to see $2,100, $2,200 a month in cash flow on that. So that way they know that their note's getting paid and he has extra income to cover any shortcomings. If he's got a broken air conditioner, he's got a you know, leaky roof, 
they want to make sure he's got coverage on that. So some of them will go down as low as 1.0, 1, 1, 1. but as a general rule, they're anywhere 1.1, 1.2 is the average. Um, and with, and, and the, the less you have on the house, so say you're in this point, you're at 66%, they may go higher or lower on that number. They may go to a 0.9 because you have a higher value. There's less risk for them. So it's all risk-based. So if you've got a more equity, they may take um, a little bit lower numbers. So uh, talk to your lenders on that because every lender is different. Um, I, I can tell you about five different ones right now off the top of my head, and every one of them has a different program. Uh, different qualifications, but it's a great loan program um, for people that are trying to do buy and holds um, because it doesn't go against your personal uh, debt to income. It goes against the house, your credit, and you can pick that thing up, especially if you've got 25, 30, 35% in equity. If you're buying it right, you should have that equity to be able to get those numbers and make those numbers work. At those. And, and, and generally, the more equity you have, the better interest rates you'll get as well. So. Great question. Great answer. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments, concerns, feedback? Say that one more time. For sub two, yeah. well, if you're subject to, and I mean, you're kind of like assuming their loan, so you're not shooting for like seven. Am I am I wrong on answering your question? Yeah. Financing. If you would offer more for if they have lower if the, oh, so if they got 2.3, would I offer them seven? Uh, well, no, no, your purchase price. Would I offer them a higher purchase? So are you talking about seller financing or taking over their mortgage? Probably seller financing. Okay. Okay, so like owner finance where they don't have a mortgage, right? Um, it's all negotiable. It's all negotiable. So what, you know, and then you got to look at whatever the purchase price is. I, I run everything through an Excel sheet. I have like a calculator. So if I'm looking at rentals from a rental standpoint, like does it make sense? Because for me, I'm not buying, personally, I'm not buying subject to and then keeping them. If I'm doing subject to, we're going to rehab it. And then in six to eight months, sell it and give them their principal back. Does that make sense? So there's a lot of trust involved. And I'm negotiating, really they're gonna make their spread on the back end or we might negotiate a interest rate. But I don't do a ton of I don't do a ton of subject to, so I'm probably, you know, I'm be honest. I hope that's okay with everybody, right? I'm up here, but I find deals and it's a strategy. I offer it, offer subject to, I offer anybody doing novations. As you let's say, uh, it's really assisting the seller and being very transparent with the seller, letting them know that you're not buying this property, right? And it's a program as an investor where now we're we're a concierge service. I know this is like so gray area because I'm not I'm not a licensed agent, right? But there is a document where you're actually getting paid from the HUD like a fee, not an assignment fee, but it's a novation. It's a little complicated. You want to get a good realtor involved in, a, in an attorney, but it is a strategy because right now where sellers are wanting more, right, for their property, you can offer them more and maybe they don't want to deal with uh, all of that, like just dealing with it. We'll deal with it for, for them, right? So it's more like a concierge service. It's a last resort for us. So we'll offer cash, which is usually lower, right? Because we have to make sense. And then we have a subject to if they have a mortgage. If they don't have a mortgage, then you're not subject to anything. It's an owner finance. So it's up to you to come up with the interest rates that you're, you know, negotiating. I think Shake, 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 Shake said that. Um, and then, uh, you know, either one of those, and then worst case scenario is our novation, right? I don't wanna say worst case scenario, but maybe somebody just wants us to handle all that. And then the realtor, you have a realtor that's actually going to list it and get paid to list it, and then you give them what you, what you promised them, and then you take whatever uh, your fee was on there. I hope that wasn't too long and made sense. Any, so, but nobody's doing them. 
So I'm, I need to go and just do more. No, use it. Use it, you guys. Novations, look it up. It's a strategy, but I would not like start out with them. It's not my first, my first strategy. Here's the thing. Um, if you're an agent, you're a licensed agent, and you don't invest, that's okay. But if you don't allow, if, if you put yourself in a box and you only do retail, who are you really hurting? Right? You're not really giving the full service. Same thing as a wholesaler or if you're an investor. I don't have my license. I plan on getting my license or somebody in my office have it. Right? But the, go but the goal is, is if I can't uh, take the project down myself, then why would I just let the lead slip, slip out of my hands when I can actually help the seller? Because at the end of the day, it's about the seller. I mean, these houses. You know what I mean? Um, we want to make a profit from the value that we bring to the marketplace, but just keep that in mind. I think things are going to shift where you're going to see a lot more investor agents slash agent investors. They're not going to put themselves in a box, hopefully, right? So, you want to say anything? I just pass it to you. You want to say anything about? Um, well, I just want to say I've done a, quite a bit of seller financing, if anyone's interested, and I've actually managed to do them all the same. I call it a 10 10 5. So anyone that's going to sell or finance that has equity, they tend to be older. And I guarantee they are not going to finance it for you for 30 years. They don't want to. They're, they're tired. They want to know they're going to get paid back. But the tax, telling them you're going to save them on taxes because they spread it out is huge. But so the most I've ever gone out is a 10-year amortization. So I have fully paid them back within 10 years. A lot of times they'll just do it for three years. You can do maybe a 20-year amortization with a three-year balloon. And that's where you're going to spread the payments out as if it is a 20-year loan. But after three years, you're going to get a, you're going to cash out refi. Okay, there's all, you can do anything you want. It's beautiful. But I always do a 10, 10, 5, 10 year amortization, 10% down, and then 5% APR. But everything is negotiable. But you want the lowest purchase price shake, and you want the lowest APR. We're investors. That's how we make money. So that, if that answers your question. And then the other thing I always do is I get an amortization table. I print it out. I say, Mr. Seller, here is my offer. It's $110,000 with a 10-year amortization, five-year APR. And look at the bottom. Here's $114,000 extra that you're going to make in interest. And I, here's the table. You can look every month how much interest I'm paying you. And when you can show them how they're actually going to make more on their property by financing it to you, plus they're going to spread out that tax um, uh, gain over 10 years, that's a win-win-win. You win, they win, and then they win again. Because they not only got their price, they got interest on top of it, and they spread out their taxes. So this is a sales tactic. I'm a salesman, but it, it truly is a win for everyone. So that's how I have done my seller financing. Give, educate your seller who you are. Give them references. Give them, you know what? Every seller finance deal I've done, I've handed them myself and my husband's credit score from Experion. I print it out, and I say, here you are. I want you to know. And I offer them, I've never had them take me up on references, but I offer them references. You have to be who you are. You have to be brutally honest. They're loaning you a lot of money. They're handing you a house that they've probably cared about for a long time. So it is very possible. It's hard to find guys that'll do it, but they are out there. I have found four of them. You have a question? I call it a 10, 10, 5. You can call it whatever you want. That's what I call it. 10 year amortization. So after 10 years it's paid off to zero. And I have a 10% year, a 10 down in cash. So if I'm buying a house from Miriam for $100,000, I'm going to hand her $10,000 at closing. They're always going to want you to have skin in the game. I have never seen someone sell or finance 100% to me, ever, never. They always say, no, I've asked. I've asked every time. They're like, no. They want to walk out of there with cash. So I go 10% down, 10% amortized, fully amortized. But I could do 20, 30. You can do whatever you want. And then a 5% APR. I like an APR, and I've done this since before the interest, when the interest rates were low, I did 5%, and now that they're high, I'm still doing 5%. And I tell them, that's my hedge. I'm just right there in the middle. If interest rates go up, I'm still at five, and if they go down, I'm still at five. So that's how I have structured it. Yes? So when you do your 10, 10, 5, do you pay for 10 years? Or yes, ma'am. Okay, that's a good question. First off, your closing attorney, again, they work for you. You have to pay the attorney anyway, right? There is no extra charge. When I tell my attorney, uh, Doug McManamy, that I'm doing seller financing, he's going to write up that contract, and that contract is going to say anything I want, and I want to make sure the seller is all, you know, we're on the same page. 
the one I have in process right now, the seller, he's the first one to do this and that, I'm okay with it because he's like, you write it up and my lawyer is going to review it and once they both agree, then I'll sign. No problem, right? So it's all negotiable. Um, I lost my train of thought. Tell me again. A prepayment penalty. Thank you. Okay, the one I'm working on right now, I have one under contract. It's going to be seller finance. He looked me in the eyeball two weeks ago. He goes, don't you dare pay me back early. I said, yes, sir. But I'm buying, this is his, that's his preference, okay? But you understand, he knows I'm buying this to hold. He, I told him when I put in the offer, I want to pass it to my children, and I do. So that's the truth. But the, everything's negotiable. Well, some of them are going to want that balloon payment in three years. So you're going to have 17 years left on the debt, basically, but you're going to pay them back, and you're going to have to go cash out refi. But it's all negotiable. So, uh, but yeah, typically they're not sophisticated enough to do a prepayment penalty. A DSCR loan is going to have a prepayment penalty. I want to say that, and uh, typically uh, private money lenders also might. So but watch those prepayment penalties. That's a great question. But I have never offered it, and I, I don't. I'm going to take that loan all the way to the whatever hundred and some payment. All right. So um, how many of you got value out of this today? Five bucks for the Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, let's give it up for us. So we do, we, we do have to leave here at like at a hard nine. So it's like what, 830, almost 830, 850, 820 or something like that. So, you know, the rest of the, the night, we're just networking. Please eat the rest of the food. Um, uh, and, and once again, thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to Clyde, you know, here for the space, right? And um, I appreciate all of you for coming. It's cool to see a lot of people I have never met. So I think this is awesome. This was a great event. Um, yeah, and if you guys want to get in touch with me, uh, you can come find me. And I have a digital business card. So it's on my phone. So I can send, get, get you that if you want to... Um, you know, need wholesale deals, want to talk rehabbing, and uh, just talk business, reach out, so. I want to, we always challenge everyone at the end of the Cashflow Savannah meetups, I want every one of you to find someone that you don't know and take them to lunch, take them to coffee, get, spend some time networking outside of this and also come back next month. But I really challenge you, if you really want this business, you really want to get in it, find someone that you want to learn from and say, hey, can I get 30 minutes of your time? They'll probably say yes. I highly recommend Kevin. And, um, but please don't just come to the meetup. Take action outside of this meetup. That's my challenge to every one of you. Cool. Anything you want to say? Thank you all. Yeah. Just want to say again, thank you everyone for coming. If you're newer to real estate investing, you want to kind of learn how to balance with working a full-time job, and also trying to build a portfolio. And if you want to do any DIYs, I've all my houses have actually renovated myself. So I've done all the trades. So if you want to know anything about, you know, living flips or uh, uh, anything like that, just come to me and I will gladly teach you what I know. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, y'all. Thank you.